Does anybody trick or treat anymore? Does anyone? I'm starting to wonder, honestly. And and I think, you know, COVID changed a lot of things, mm-hmm. but even pre-COVID, we would um, put out a bowl of candy on the front porch and just, it was on our system, you know? Yeah, I get that. And uh, when, at the end of the night, when I, you know, 11 p.m., mm-hmm. even, even waited for the teenagers in t-shirts to come around, uh, brought in the bowl, it was like still 75% full. Oh, wow. So I know that there are now a lot of Halloween events, particularly trunk or treating. Right, that's a big one. Which I believe has only happened in the last 20 years. And also, right? it's such a bummer. I don't like trunk or treats. I think they're kind of lame and they're not as fun. So I love the concept of efficiency. You've heard the Jerry Seinfeld bit, get candy, mm-hmm. get candy, get candy. Right, right. You know, you got kids out there with pillowcases. Oh, yeah. And they want to fill it to the brim. Mm-hmm. And I fully support that, by the way. Oh, of course. It's the one It's the one night a year that they can. And so I love the concept of trunk or treating so much that I actually... All right. So uh, pulling back the curtain in radio a little bit. Sometimes radio people go from market to market. Mm -hmm. The minute you show up at a new radio station, they pump you hard for ideas and information because you're fresh blood. You're coming in with a fresh perspective and you sort of tell them things that worked in your market. So, So the minute I show up in Milwaukee, they're like, okay, what have you done that works? And I said, well, one thing that it was, it was, was it the fall? One thing that I've seen work in Salt Lake is trunk or is something called trunk or treating. This was a brand new concept. And you know how when you're so excited to share something with somebody because it's such a brilliant idea? We've done that a lot on oh, this yeah. show. Mm-hmm. And 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 you just can't wait to see their eyes light up. There was nothing but deadness when they looked at me. They just blank. Some of them, I dare say, were even a bit aghast. Well, yeah, because it is the death of Halloween. At the concept. So the 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 uh, Wisconsin State Fairgrounds are right there near downtown Milwaukee, and I proposed, you know, doing a first ever trunk or treat, and they thought I was crazy. Mm-hmm. They thought I was on something, and I may have been. No, <laughs> <laughs> beer, brats, and cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> In retrospect, I kind of get it because if you're trying to explain the concept of trunk or treating to somebody foreign. You know, basically, you're proposing that uh, strangers with their trunk open greet kids offering them candy. It does sound, if you put it that way, (laughs) it sounds a little weird. Well, yeah. I mean, especially if they have white vans. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No white windowless vans. (laughs) (laughs) Which is what, like, every radio station van is, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway... um, I, I do think that the missing key ingredient that I didn't quite understand at the time was it started in church parking lots. It started with people that you go to church with. That So there's that built-in mm-hmm. trust right, to right. some degree. Well, and you know, I think that you really should have harped on how much safer it is because, you know, you're all in one space. Yeah. Everyone's looking at everyone. It's not like anyone can grab a kid and run away because there's someone else five feet away from them. Right. Yeah. But I love the concept of trunk or treating because kids get candy fast. That's true. But I think kids should have to work for it. I think it makes you more grateful for the candy you do get. Well, yeah. And I know there was at least one Halloween where I told the kids, uh, and and I think they were older, so it wasn't much of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. One of them actually had a party they were going to, a sleepover at a friend's house or something. Oh, cute. But I was just like, I'm just going to go buy a bunch of little minis. We'll Mm -hmm. get the good stuff. You can divide it up. Would that be okay? Yep. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Because, you know, yeah. I, like Easter egg hunts where the parents force their one-month-old to go out on the field and battle with a six-month-old. Yeah. I'm exaggerating <laughs> slightly. <laughs> you know, it's like, why don't you just go spend the $2 on a bag of candy and call it good? True. I true. know there's I will say the too, experience in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, and- on the other side of the trick or treat uh, exchange, as the person in the house giving out the candy, I would much rather be in my house with wassail on the stove or apple cider or whatever. I guess wassail's a little Christmassy, uh, but apple cider on the Don't stove. Don't skip holidays, Carly. Stop How it. dare you talk about wassail <laughs> at Halloween time? <laughs> How dare you? 
Anyway, sorry, with apple cider. Cinnamon and oranges and cranberries only belong after Thanksgiving. Okay, too much. I hope you know how much I hate you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> anyway, I would much rather a nice be witch's in my brew house on the stove with apple cider on the stove and a horror movie on the TV, you know, where I can just get up from the couch, open the door, throw some candy at some babies, and then close the door again. <laughs> Plus, it's so much warmer. I don't want to be outside in the cold outside my car waiting for some kid to walk around and half heartedly say trick or treat. <laughs> 